It's me and Shell, everybody. Here we are for you all. How has everybody? How's everybody's week been? Has it been fantastic? Has it been what we can only describe as special, everybody? Special. Was I think every week is special right now. And uh, the only day that I ever know it is, is when me and you come together on a Wednesday. Well, we have got somebody coming live from Texas. We're going international tonight. From Texas? Yes. It is now <laughs> two o'clock, just gone two o'clock in Texas. And we are going to have a very soon in the program, a lovely lady called Mandy, uh, originally from Manchester. She's going to be joining us live here from the Canal Street Facebook. And uh, she's going to be telling us about some of the amazingly funny videos that she's been doing in lockdown. I cannot wait to have Mandy with us. She sounds like a fantastic, phenomenal person. And I want to know what's better, Texas or Manchester? I dare to take up that challenge. Uh, she is Mancunian through and through, so I'm sure she's going to say Manchester, but we'll find out a little bit later on. We've also got a fantastic chef joining us called Pete. So he's coming on fairly soon. But I have to start the show off by being a little bit soppy. Can I be soppy? You can be as soppy as you want, Flower. <laughs> Well, I have been married on Monday, believe it or not, looking at me, 12 years. That's good going, Flower. I know, I know, I know. I could have been in and out of jail by now. <laughs> ah, ah. Oh, was it a good wedding? It was, do you know what? It was an amazing wedding. I don't know where those 12 years went, but it is my wedding anniversary on Monday, which is the 25th of May. And that's, that's me and the hubby. Look at us. We look so young. Yeah, so cute, so cute. Oh. Well, that when... was, as I say, that was 12 years ago at Mirecourt in Cheshire. We were very Ooh, posh, haven't it, in Cheshire? Yeah. Um, normally, well. I know. It's a bit weird, though. Like, look at you. <laughs> you have to go one better. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, everybody... <laughs> with kind of birthdays and, and, you know, weddings that were meant to be, it is going to be quite weird for me and the hubby in lockdown to be celebrating our anniversary. Um, but yes, I, I still love him so much after 12 years and that much that uh, two years ago on our 10th wedding anniversary, we decided to do it all over again. I surprised him. We were on holiday in Mallorca and what I'd planned before we went away was a wedding. And he couldn't say no, could he? Oh, why would he? He was already married. Eh? I know, but it was a renewal of our vows and it was really lovely because we've got kids and, and the kids were there and, and it was just really, really special because I think sometimes weddings, obviously you have a lot of people and, and you get thrown in different directions, don't you? Because everyone wants a piece of you on the day, absolutely. But that for yeah. us, it, it really meant something. You know, when you have a good wedding, you've always got to have good food, haven't you? So you've had two goals at it now with great food. Uh, so with that in mind, I think we should bring in our next guest. Shell, you do the best intro, so you should probably introduce them. Oh, well, this is going to be absolutely fantastic because I have always dreamed of having my own personal chef. Now, this guy has cooked for so many VIPs and he's with us in the house tonight. I've got to introduce Pete Cooks. Come and join us. Hello. Hello. Hello, ladies. How are you doing? How are you? Very well, thank you. Can you hear me okay? We can. can yeah. Good stuff. So you are, nice live. you are live from the kitchen, P. And what are you going to be doing for us tonight? Pete cooked in the kitchen live. Looking forward to it. We're going to cook up a nice recipe together. Fabulous, fabulous. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about you, because obviously I just introduced you then as a personal <laughs> chef. But what is Pete Cooks all about? Um, well, Pete Cooks is, is, is me. I'm Pete. I cook. Pete Cooks. And I, it's basically a private dining service. I do a lot of dinner parties at the weekends. Well, normally I do a lot of dinner parties at the weekend. Mm. Um, I do cooking classes. I do team building like experiences where you get whole teams like marketing teams together and bring them all together and do cooking experiments and things like that. Um, and then I have regular clients that I cook for every week that I'll go into their house and fill their fridge up with, you know, food for the next three days and then go in again on the Thursday and 
same again. I'm just adding some butter to the pan now. The reason I'm adding oil and butter is because you don't want to burn the butter and the oil has a like a higher burning point. So if you mix the two together, you're not going to burn the burn the gnocchi or the butter, but you're also going to get that nice colour and caramelisation that you want on the gnocchi. Mm. So, and that's interesting because I've just learned how to make carbonara. Sorry, Belinda. And I in the recipe, this, yeah. it says that you need butter in the pan rather than oil. And I almost put oil in the second time that I did it. And I thought, no, it says butter. And it does feel like it gives it a different taste. Oh, God. You know, every every chef's secret is butter, let's be honest. You know, <laughs> add butter to anything, it makes it better. But, um, I'm quite partial to it myself. Right, so what I'm doing here, I'm just, I've got the pan. You can see that the butter's, the butter sort of, and the oil sort of gently simmering away. I'm going to turn the heat up to sort of a medium high. And then I'm going to add the gnocchi. The, the unique thing about my cooking is it's, it's so vast. You know, if you want Thai food, I can do Thai food. If you want Indian food, I can do Indian food. So I'm just checking on these knockies. How long does it, how long do you have to have that in the pan then, Pete? Right, so I'm frying these. Yes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn them all over now. Yeah. And you should be able to see you get a nice colour of brown on them there. Very nice. Right, so so you wanna do it for oh, what is this coming from? You wanna be going for so four minutes on the first side and then flip them over. And we're just going to do one more minute. Okay, cool. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the sage for the last sort of minute, okay? So here I've got some sage leaves. I'm putting them in whole because we're not going to eat them. It's just going to flavour the sauce and flavour the gnocchi. I'm going to put them in, in whole. There's about 15, 20 grams there. Can you get that anywhere, Pete? I mean, I, I've... I, sage I, any, well, I, I, I actually managed to get my sage from Sainsbury's today. But, you know, you can pretty much get sage anywhere, yeah. Or you can grow it Brilliant. yourself, you know, if you want. Fantastic. Love a bit of sage. Right, you so... About, you talked about uh, all those places, P, and I know that gives you inspiration for trying to, to create lots of dishes, but I suppose what's your favourite dish to cook? <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know, that's a tough one. I don't think I have a favourite dish as such, but I definitely have a favourite cuisine. So I love cooking Indonesian food. Um... I absolutely. I spent three months in Bali and learned so much about that that style of cooking. Um, I love sort of spicy but aromatic flavors. So I do a lot of yeah Asian flavors and, and Middle Eastern and Moroccan sort of flavors as well that I really really enjoy. So I can't mm. say I've got a favorite dish, but I, well maybe I can. You know, I, I'm going to go against everything I've just said. My favorite dish is probably a Sunday roast. <laughs> like, if I'm honest. Nice cheese on toast. I'm, I'm going to sound really uneducated, but what is Indonesian food? What exactly? I don't think I've ever had Indonesian. Um, so satay. Mm -hmm. Have you had chicken satay before? Oh yeah. Yeah, so that's an Indonesian dish. We've All got, right. Um, beef rendang, which is like a slow cooked beef in a coconut sauce. You've right. got um, dish is like my garang, which is um, like a, a, a noodle stir fry dish full of flavour. It's got eggs in there. It's got different spices and oh, it's stunning. Um, what I'm doing at the moment and what I'm really enjoying the most is um, I'm doing a lot of cooking classes, um, a lot of Zoom cooking classes with kids, um, which has gone down so well. And the kids love it. The parents love it because they get a bit of peace and quiet for a bit. And for me, it's just it's really rewarding because, you know, that is my you know why i cook because i want younger kids to cook i want to inspire other people to cook so you know I'm, I'm making the most of it i'm writing a recipe book um you know I, i'm just keeping myself busy really um but you know until people are comfortable with me coming into their house it'll be a while until i'm cooking you know properly again what type of food will you feature in the recipe book uh, so well it's actually it's going to be very it'll be very very wide it'll be it'll be based on cuisines so mm. sort of like my dinner parties are, you know, you'd maybe have your Asian cuisines, your Italian cuisines, your, you know, your Middle Eastern, you know, um, your French, and then you, there'll be different dishes that all work together. That you could, you know, create a dinner party based on that. Um, 
but at the moment I'm just sort of putting all my recipes together. What I'd really like to do with it is do it so it's a family cookery book that um, has different sections for the adults and kids to do. So, you know, say you're doing, you know, you were, we were doing the chicken satay dish, for example, you know, the kids can make all the spice mix, they can marinate the chicken, you know, they can put it on the skewers and the adults can do the frying off at the end. And, you know, it, it, it brings the family together cooking, which is what I think has, has, has been lost over, you know, however many years. So. And what I've got to say, Pete, is because I've got two little ones and they can be really fussy with the food. But whenever we try and get them in the kitchen with me and make something together, they eat their tea yeah. that night yeah. because yeah. they've made it. And it's they've like, made it themselves, exactly I can that. get them to eat salad. It's like, because yeah, no, they've made right. it. It's actually, it's what I do with a lot of my regular clients is they've got fussy kids as well. And I'll make them feel really involved. So I'll sit down with the kid and say, you know, what do you want this week? What would you like to eat? And then, you know, they feel like they're part of it. So they're more likely to to eat the sort of healthy, the vegetables and all that stuff because they've chosen it themselves, you know. Just bring you back Can to we... the dish a minute. Okay, cool. Sorry. This is actually, this is actually done now. I've turned the heat off. So at the moment, we've just got the nice sage. The gnocchi's nice and browned. Oh, look at that. And you've got oh, the sage gorgeous. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to basically, sorry, get my angles right. I'm just going to sort of serve this up, as it were. And it's so simple. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really easy, really easy. And then just I've got a zester. I'm just going to do a little bit of lemon zest on there, and that's going to add a real zing to it. So you're not squeezing the lemon, you're just doing no, the zest. No, not the juice, because that would make it go a bit soggy, you see. So I'm trying to get the flavour of the lemon without, you know, without ruining the, the texture of the gnocchi. So I'm just adding that, and then I've got the parmesan. I'm just going to add sort of like a, a little sprinkling of that as well. Mm. Just put the whole bowl on. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. That's what I was thinking, Belinda. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you can see that okay. Um, Grummy. Just... It looks delightful. And so yeah, that's your gnocchi in a crispy gnocchi in a stage butter with lemon and parmesan. And what I like to do is just put a little bit of bit of greenery on top. You could also um I might just do a little you, squeeze about sandwich you as well. Sage, or do you have to take the sage out? <laughs> if you want to, if you want the taste of sage in your mouth for the next six months, then uh Oh. I'd eat it, but uh, no, I would, right. I would, I would, I would avoid eating the sage leaves. What it does, it really flavours the butter and flavours the gnocchi. But you know, it's a bit like garlic. You don't eat a raw garlic clove. You know, it's no. it's, it's really quite. It's food, so. it, it? Say again. Bit of rocket. Bit rocket. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of rocket. Yeah, so we've got a bit of rocket on there, and then a bit of balsamic. And that's that's it. Dead easy. But like I said, you could easily. I've fried that gnocchi with, you know, just in salt and pepper. Oh, I forgot salt and pepper. I should have done this before, actually. Sorry. Right, a bit of salt and pepper. <laughs> um, we, we didn't I... notice, Pete. Go on. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. It's on there now. It's on there. Nobody has to know. That looks fantastic stuff, though. I um, am so yeah. gutted we can't taste it. Are you going to eat well, that? Right she's getting my food after, so she's she's happy about that. I know. Now <laughs> that is a fabulous dish. You've hooked me on the kids' classes. How do we get in touch with you? Because we've got a little bit of a runner that we've been putting on the screen, which is your Facebook. Is that oh, the okay, best cool, way to get in touch? Uh, yeah. So via Facebook, if you put the link there, Instagram. Uh, my website is petecooks.com, or you can just email me at hi at petecooks.com you know Brilliant. um yeah all my, my contact numbers on my website you can ring me right directly um but yeah they're working really well and the kids are loving it so you know if we can push that great you know i'd appreciate I'm it I'm planning on holiday at the end of the year i might fully contact you because if i don't have to cook that's why i class as a proper holiday <laughs> yeah right <laughs> let's have your chef round but it's not just that as well it's Go picking on. up the tips as well. I think if you have somebody in your home and you know you're kind of chatting to them as you go along and they're talking yeah. you through the dish, it's you learning. do get it more, don't definitely. you? Yeah, you learn yeah. a lot more, definitely. Yeah. So that's what I try and do with all my cooking lessons is add 
some tips throughout that you know the kids can sort of take forward with them you know um, and I'm not cooking rubbish, you know, I'm not cooking scones and, and, and you know, like Belinda said before, beans and toast, you know, we're learning proper, you know, proper food, curries from scratch, you know, like I said, the chicken satay is one of the dishes on there, you know, doing proper, proper cooking. Well, I've seen a few of your dishes. In fact, we have got a few dishes that um, show off some of your skills that we're going to show off. <laughs> uh, off right now. Just an barrister, of course, Pete, of course. <laughs> I'm going red, I'm going back red now. We're going to go back. <laughs> But talk us through some of the dishes that we're going to show. So we're, we're going to put some up on screen and everything. And you can tell us a little bit about them and, and whether or not they're your favourites. And you said the That's recipe good. book is something that you're you're doing uh, at the moment. Anything else that you have got planned after lockdown? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got so much going on. I've got quite a lot of like TV and media stuff going on. I've got... Um, well, hopefully all these bookings, you know, they're paid deposit. So, you know, they will start to come in. I've actually started having bookings again for dinner parties in July and August, which I basically just said, you know, I'll be completely flexible. And if we have to change the date, we've changed the date. But, you know, people are starting to think ahead a bit, um, you know, but just just keep cooking. You know, that's, you know, I, I, I only set this business up in, in, in May last year. It's actually the year anniversary in a couple of days. And just to look back at everything that I've done, all the people I've met, to be fully, you know, to be booked out two months in advance, to, you know, it's just been amazing. I've, it's just such a, it's been so nice, but the reaction that people have had to my food and, and to me, it's, it's been so overwhelming and lovely. So, well, um, yeah, sorry, you well, wanted to talk about pictures, didn't you? I am, no, I'm kind of glad that we are in lockdown because we actually managed to nab you because I think if we hadn't been in lockdown, <laughs> Pete, yeah, we would have been out to at, 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 at Wednesday house tonight so. cooking up, up a storm and you've been able to cook for us, which is amazing. Oh, bless you. No, it's been an honour, seriously. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell so, you what, once, once this is all over, I'll come and cook for you guys. You know, definitely. It's all well, me exactly. and, uh, well, you and well. obviously Justin as well. Justin, we'll, we'll, That's all, all you need to say. That's it. <laughs> we love you. Yeah. And then, there we go. I've done my job. Oh, <laughs> so, well, yeah, no, that'll be great. So, yeah, definitely. But please, yeah, please do yeah. come back and uh, be I'll on the show it. again for us. We'd love to have you on. Um, good luck with the recipe book. Go and get <laughs> yourself you a celebratory drink and enjoy your knock -in. I will do. You take All care. Right. I'll be speaking but, to you, ladies. You take care. Take, you take care. care. See you soon. Bye bye. See you later. Bye bye.